content. So today I'm going to be teaching you the chorus to raise a hallelujah. Um, so I'm going to sign the chorus for you and then I'll break it down. Okay, so let's break that down for you. So the first line of the chorus is, I'm going to sing in the middle. So that's the middle finger there, the middle of the palm there. The middle of the storm. Storm. And so the first line is, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Then it's louder and louder. Louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. So it's I, I can't speak at the same time because uh, the cheeks need to be uh, puffed out. This one because we're we're roaring. So it's um, louder and louder. You're going to. Hear my praises roar. Louder and louder. Up from the ashes. So louder and louder. Up from the ashes. So just twisting around both hands. It doesn't matter which way around you do it. Up from the ashes. Hope. So from the heart. Just the passing it on will arise. So this is, is Christ rising. So we make a C. And it rises. So he, he's risen from the dead. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Then the final line of the, the chorus is death, which we've done before. So it's just the two fingers. Death is repeated. So we've got our person here, and we use the dominant hand push person down so death is defeated the king so we're, we're just grabbing our crown so the king is alive so the first part of this is the middle finger again so can we just it means full, full of life, really. So it is, it's that kind of, and then it's true. So he's alive. So putting the chorus all together, I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. And so we'll do the chorus all the way through with music.
tested me Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S Came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door It says to me, it tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, He cares. When you seek, He's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. I choose to worship, I choose to bow Though there's pain in the offering, I lay it down Here in the conflict, when doubt surrounds Though my soul is unraveling, I choose you now I will praise you through the fire, through the storm and through the flood. There is nothing that could ever steal my soul. In the valley, you are worthy. You are good when life is not. You will always and forever be my soul. I build my own. Of the darkest night, it won't burn out. For you are perfect, no matter what. In the joy of the suffering, I sing it loud. I will praise you through the fire.
Matthew 7, beginning at verse 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Amen.
last week I was talking about authority and how we have that authority in us right from the time of creation. And I talked about having the authority that Christ has given us in restoring the authority that Adam had in the garden. And I was talking about God giving over that authority to Adam to name the animals and to name creation. So God, although he's in power and authority, steps out to allow man to have that authority over creation. God has given it over to man. And in Jesus Christ, we have that redemption, that being brought back and being brought back to give that authority back to us again. Recently, I was praying with a... Some time ago, sorry, I was praying with a, a lady who'd had a series of problems throughout her life. And she was talking to me about an issue she was having in the present time. But as she started to talk about this one issue here in the present sense of time, she said, and that's what, something happened like that this time. And as she went back through her life, I started to see that within that, her struggles and her pain and some horrible situation here, there was also a parallel with some other situation which was like it there. And then she said, oh yes, and by the way, when I was a bit younger, la 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 la. Oh, and when a bit, and there were five situations. And I started to listen to it. I thought, this isn't right. What's going on? So I asked her about her first situation. And she told me of something that in the first situation, some words were said to her. And those words stayed in her soul for the whole of her life. But as the words were in her soul, it was those words that began to take root. And spiritually, she was oppressed in this place. Cutting you free from those words brought the healing for all the five. Sometimes we can ask, seek, knock, and not know what the heck's going on. Thinking, well, I prayed to God. Let's just clear a few things up first of all. In the church, we often go, Lord, hear our prayer. Prayer just means talking to God. Jesus says, when you pray, when you talk to God, say this. He didn't say, when you talk to God, say, I'm talking to you, God. So very often we go, Lord, I'm pray, I pray for so-and-so. And God's going, yeah, okay. I'm praying for you to do what? What do, what do you ask him? I'm praying. I'm just talking. Prayer just means talking to God. So we might as well not use the word prayer in our words for prayer because it just means talking to God. I'm talking to you, Graham. And you would go, yeah, yes, you are, Paul. And? So often, Jesus said, when you talk to God, say this, Father in heaven, my Father in heaven, holy is your name. And Jesus goes on to say that how to pray. He says, it's something about asking, seeking, and knocking. Well, I've prayed for it, and it doesn't seem to have happened. I've asked God about it, and it doesn't seem to happen. I don't believe in God, because if it was a God, and I prayed about it, and nothing. How many times people may have said that to you? But that's not the Bible. The Bible doesn't say, talk to God just like that, and then it'll happen. He says, ask, seek, and knock. One of the things we've got to understand is that faith in God has two parts. It has a conviction that God exists, but the devil is convinced that God exists. So a conviction is not enough. Well, I believe in God. That's not enough. The devil believes in God. A conviction is not enough. But also, we need a confidence that he, in God's nature... He is a rewarder. He's a rewarder. And if you want to know the scripture, it says, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. There's something about seeking God and the place of the heart. And Hebrews 11 says this, and without faith, without belief, or the Hebrew word without trust, 
it's impossible to please God. Without trusting in God, you can't please God. Because anyone who comes to God must trust that he exists and that he rewards, rewards, rewards those who earnestly seek him. What we believe about God will have an effect on our lives in a measurable way. What we believe about God will have an effect on us. In the same way, what we believe about ourselves will have a a seed in the soul right from the beginning of when somebody said to you, you are worthless, you're just like your father, you'll never be any good, and the words that are sown in those early days become part of our life, and before long, the enemy comes in and uses those for that five incidents that I was talking about the lady before. So the words need to be sown. What words have been sown in your lives? What words have you been told all your life? I'll tell you what mine was. You're stupid. I had a head teacher who used to call me stupid whitehead. I grew up all my life thinking I was stupid and wasn't academic enough. Why? Because those words were planted when I was ten, nine by somebody who should have known better. But in the 60s, they talk to you like that. Still no excuse. They were wrong. And perhaps sometimes we need to come to God and say, what is, what is it? What is going on here, Lord? I'm praying about this, but nothing seems to be happening. Where are you? What is going on? Ask. Ask, Mark 11 says, and believe you've received it. How do you believe something you've received it when you've got these words telling you that it's totally opposite? You can't just do believe just like that. Especially if you've got a lifelong. So there's something more about prayer that isn't just asking. It's coming to that place of belief, but it's a journey towards it. So <clears throat> as we come in prayer, we need each of us a revelation of Jesus. To trust you have received it. Well, I'm not ready to trust you've received it. It's very hard when I've had that all my life and suddenly the God's word saying I've got to trust that I'm going to believe that I received it. We've got this conflict coming between us. Now, I talked last time about knowing your authority in Christ and one of the central things to do with when we're praying is to know who we are in Christ and where we stand now as restored Adam with authority that we didn't have before. That's the old life. When we're looking back, those are old words. That's my headmaster, Ted, teacher. Old words, old life. Nothing to do with the new life. Those words are irrelevant to who I am now. I'm not stupid. I'd have to tell myself that. Because they're so, so, sown into the ground. They've got roots. And you have to keep telling until those roots die. But knowing who God is, that he's a rewarder, a rewarder, a rewarder. He doesn't send bad stuff. So, I was thinking about knocking, asking, seeking. The word in Hebrew means to investigate. Now, we all watch TV and with all the crime dramas and the crime TV programs, CSI, whatever you watch. If they suspect somebody of a crime, they won't just go straight in there. They will seek, investigate evidence and find out what's behind it. They'll go in and find it. Then comes the end of the, towards the end of the, uh, of, the, of the episode when the police are or the FBI are outside the door and they're going bang, bang, bang on the door, knocking on the door and said, open up, it's the FBI, or open up, we're coming in. And if they don't want to come in, and usually on the TV there's somebody running out the back window, they bring the battering ram in, they go, go, bang, and they push the door in. It's a bit violent, isn't it? But they're knocking. And knocking is violent sometimes. Because the enemy's doors are so thick. And the enemy's walls are so thick and thick on our lives that sometimes we have to keep knock, 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 knock. And that's about persistence in prayer. Trusting, knocking. Trusting, knocking. Those who hope in the Lord. That word hope is actually rest. Those who rest back in God and say, it's all right, that door's coming down. It's all right, that door's coming down. Which of you... Ask his son for bread, we'll give him a stone. Or if you ask for a fish, we'll give him a snake. God ain't going to do that. God doesn't bring us snakes when we ask for stuff. He gives his good, he's good all the time. It's the enemy who's the serpent. But he calls us, God calls us in a journey of investigation, of seeking him and saying, 
Show, Lord, show me the evidence. What do I need to pray in? And so what was happening with this, this person I'm talking about before is that on her own, she couldn't do it by herself. That's why where two or more are gathered, I am with you. Because the second person needs to be able to be objective, step back, to be able to see the stuff that that person can't often see. The person who is ill it usually does not have the faith to believe God for where they are. It takes somebody else. That's why healing ministry in a church is so important because it involves others who are able to see stuff that you can't see. Where two or more are gathered, it's not meant to be a private thing. We're meant to gather together in prayer. And that's why hopefully we can do this through the media and the experience that we can have through technology uh, during this COVID time. Oh, well, I'm not going to go up for prayer. What will people think? There's your little seed, right? From don't do that, because people, your mother will say to you, what will people think? And it's sown right in the beginning when you were younger. What will people think? You're stupid. You're no good. Well, people like us never get there. Made your bed, you lie in it. Those are the words that seed. So if people don't come up for prayer, they don't come for prayer, they don't want to be set free because they don't think they could be because they've always had these seeds all the day long. Until somebody comes up and says, do you know, have you thought of receiving prayer for it? Oh, well, I don't think it'll do me any good. I find that non-Christians are more open to prayer than Christians are so often. Oh, can I pray for it? They'll go, yeah, certainly. And look at you go, well, whatever planet you're on, I'll have. But Christians go, well, I don't want to go up for prayer because I've got to walk up the aisle. Somebody might see me and what might they think of me? Because my mother always taught me, what will people think? Because we've got it sown in air, because the seeds have been sown, so we have to ask at that level to seek. Seek, you may find, knock. Strike the door down. And so in prayer is persistence. It's asking, seeking, knocking. Lord, I'm asking you, would you send your angels? Our Father in heaven, would you, you are holy. You are hallowed. I've had this all my life, but I'm coming to you now. You are a God, good God, your word says. Man has been given a power and authority, as I said a few weeks ago, to bring healing, wholeness, miracles, and setting free. We need to investigate. What is the long-term things we're praying for? We need to investigate them. We need to get evidence and gather evidence. Ask, seek it, investigate. Lord, why do I always keep coming up against this? Keeping it to yourself is not what we're called to do. We keep God's word in our heart. But if we keep those words to ourselves, we keep them in our soul. But if we confess with our mouth to somebody else, somebody else will go, oh yes, I can set you free from that. Now is confession. You're sowing words. Can you pray for me for this reason, please? Words are being sown. Kingdom can come in. We can either sow the words of a perpetual problem in our lives or we can grow and by sowing the words of who we are in Christ, the authority we have, and the fact that the old has gone and the new has come. Don't keep yourself to yourself. No, no, no. And I just ask you to prove this by asking any of you up there, out there, who have young children, how much have your young children suddenly started copying what mummy or daddy do? Without you realising suddenly... A four-year-old or a three-year-old will suddenly start doing things that parents do and they think, oh my goodness, just like a mother, just like a father. We sow seeds by how we are and what we hear. It happens to children. Jesus wants to sow his seeds of his word as who he is in our lives in comparison to the impossible situations we find. Ask, seek and knock. So next time we're going to be looking at the psalmist struggle and how the psalmist is struggling in that ask, seek, and not place. But before I do, I'm going to ask you, after you've heard this, to look at Psalm 42 and 43. That'll be the psalm I will do next week. And we'll look at, go through Psalm 42 and 43 and look at this place of struggle, of asking, knocking, and how the psalmist is feeling. And what do we do with feelings? And that's going to be what we're talking about next week. This week it's ask, seek, and knock. Wherever you want to ask, seek and knock. Remember, asking, we ask a God who exists. 
We are asking with confidence that he's a rewarder. We seek him because he's a revealer. He wants to reveal by the Holy Spirit what he wants us to pray for. And we knock because we have the authority with the God's FBI stamped right across our chest that we can bring down the strongholds of any enemy in Christ Jesus because we have been given that authority in Adam to break strongholds. And yes, it's violent, it's not nice sometimes because prayer ministry goes right to the heart of pain, struggle, to bring healing and to arrest the powers of darkness. As we meet together in this church, wherever we're meeting, at home or wherever, may I just pray. Lord, as we come to you, we talk to you, we pray. And today we just bring to you all the things that are on our hearts. And wherever we are and wherever we're listening to this, Lord, I just pray now that you would take each of us and put on our hearts places, situations we need to pray for, being mindful of the horrendous situation in Beirut and the disorder that's happening as a result there. So I invite you, us all as a church, to meet together, to ask, seek and knock for places of the world that need our prayers this week. Could I ask you to focus specifically on the world in its struggles with COVID, in its struggles with violence, death in Beirut, and whatever the Holy Spirit would lead you. So may we go into a time of prayer.
strength today In years to come still be the same God, you know how I long to hear you say Well done, my child, you ran to win the race With faith and faithfulness your eyes on me hold on my child hold on my child